Tune in to this episode of the DevOps Lab, where myself and Kartik are going to walk you through Power Platform and Azure DevOps. You don't want to miss it, so tune in. Hey, everyone, and welcome to the DevOps Lab. We're going to be talking about some awesome things with Power Platform and Azure DevOps. And with us today, we have Kartik. Kartik, welcome back. April, how are you? It's been a while. <laughs> it has been a while. So tell me, I, I mean, we're going to talk about Power Platform and Azure DevOps, and you're the expert on this, so you know everything. You're going to make it easy and awesome. Um, mm -hmm. Tell everyone briefly, what did you do for Microsoft? Uh, so I'm responsible for the Power Platform developer solutions. In, in a nutshell, what that essentially means is, is that my job is to make sure that Code first developers, uh, people that use Visual Studio and VS Code for a living, when interacting with Par Platform, uh, don't feel like they're actually having an out of body experience because you know Par Platform is a low code environment. Um, so how do we actually build the experiences that actually delight them and actually make the entire collaboration experience as fluid and seamless? That's kind of what my role is. Awesome, awesome. So we're going to talk about Power Platform and Azure DevOps, and this is important because if you're doing things in Power Platform, you want to automate as much as you can. And that's been really difficult in the past. So go ahead and show us how easy it is in Azure DevOps now, because this is really cool. Absolutely. And the key thing to also understand, too, is the fact that the reason why we're looking at DevOps is, well, a lot of these organizations in particular, because uh, in, in, in a typical life cycle of a Power App, in, for all intents and purposes, happens to be the fact that it starts off with an individual having an idea, just like any mm -hmm. other code, code, code project, and then building an app, testing it out, and then just deploying it. And then suddenly the app just ends up take, catching on like a wildfire in an organization. And then we're like, oh, wait a minute, we've got to manage this. So yeah. the intent of these integrations that we've gone ahead and put in place is to make sure that as the application development maturity from a low code standpoint continues to increase, you're then able to snap in your governance controls at the appropriate time without necessarily stifling innovation in an organization as such. All right. So and making it scalable, governed, all the happy stuff that we need. Exactly. Exactly. Cool. All right. So with that, I'm going to go ahead into my handy dandy power platform environment. So just for this demo, uh, what I've gone ahead and done, I've called it the power demo. And one thing to understand is when you're using power platform, um, especially in the context when you want to be able to go do ALM, you have to go put them in solutions. Right. Okay? And that's critical in this context because solutions are, think of solutions like a folder, if you will, that where in which you can have multiple set of apps, uh, fl uh, power automate flows, uh, you know, chat box and so on and so forth in this context, all right? So right now within Power Platform, just like any other uh, software development project, we have environments, uh, we have something called environments. These are usually self-contained, all right? And all the relevant dependencies and everything else are all put in place. And so in this case, for the purpose of our demo, I have three environments, one aptly called as dev, one mm -hmm. called QA, and the other one called prod. Awesome. And what I'm going to do now is using Azure DevOps is I'm going to go ahead and select um, this particular app that I've got, this mixed reality app that I've got, that I've just built, um, and go, have that go through the um, effort of going ahead and deploying across my dev, uh, my from my dev QA to prod in this case. But before I do that, I want to make sure that my app is actually working. So here I'm going to go ahead and click edit. Uh, and for developers that have actually used Visual Studio and things like that, this is essentially how you build applications within Power Platform, all right? Here in this example, it's Power Apps, but you would do this, you have similar experiences when you're building flows, uh, chat bots, and so on and so forth. So cool. here I've gone ahead and built this mixed reality app for all intents and purposes here, April. So are we going to do some coral reefs or are we going for Smithsonian 3D search? Well, let's, uh, you know what? Uh, I, I'm, I'm being I'm, I'm focused more on sustainability. That's that's a passion project. So let's look at coral and coral reefs, right? So here, what I've gone ahead and done. So just to kind of give you an example of what's actually happening in the background, this coral coral reef stuff is actually coming from a uh, one. There's a Smithsonian 3D API that I'm calling, which is this button here, and then I've got uh, a bunch of lists and pictures on my SharePoint drive, which is going to render everything when I click on this button. So if I go here, click on that, it says, "Hey, navigate galleries," and we'll go into the various different screens. So in this case, it actually goes into the galleries screen and does all these uh, things. So let me just show you how that works, all right? So I'm just gonna play it here. And if I now click on Coral and Coral Reefs, there we go, all ah. right? So I can. I also have a, a toggle button here. So I can, let's say I wanna go select, this thing looks like the brain. 
Let me see what that is. It's the Deploria Labyrinth Informis, or whatever it is. We just call it brain coral. It's, it's yeah, actually there you go. brain coral. But this is a brain coral. As you can see, yeah. I can look under it. I can look on the side. But this is some of the kind of complex applications that one could go build. I mean, I know I'm, I'm kind of showing this application in jest. But for all intents and purposes, these are some of the experiences of applications that you can build within Power Platform. Awesome. All right. So we now we can we can assume that the fact that this app works as intended as it's intended to be. All right. Now let's switch over to Azure DevOps. OK. Now, one thing to note is the Power Platform extensions within Azure DevOps are available in the Azure DevOps marketplace. So if you don't see some of these actions showing up in your repo, all you have to go do is go to the Azure DevOps marketplace and install these actions into your uh, into your org, and they'll be available to all the different uh, uh, projects that you have within your Azure DevOps org in this context. OK, so uh, I already have some uh, pipelines over here. Let me show you exactly how a particular uh, pipeline would look like. So if I go ahead and edit this pipeline, all right, now uh, here, just to kind of show you the fact that this is a, a multi-platform set of actions that we have, I'm actually got my agent pool currently running on Ubuntu, all right? Uh, and this is a very simple way of kind of doing things, all right? So here, what I'm actually going ahead and doing is using, again, one thing, please use service principle, all right? Uh, this is, <laughs> this is uh, in my early incarnation as a DevOps engineer, uh, I can assure you service principles are the right way to go and deploy applications, uh, especially if you uh, are building it or deploying it for scale. If you're deploying it for, for one particular utilitarian effort, then yes, go use username and password. But when deploying for scale, please use service principles. <laughs> Sorry, I just had to get that PSA message out there. No, I think that's absolutely important. Every <laughs> single pipeline should have a service principle. Yes. Yeah. So within that, and I have different types of service connections I've identified. This goes back to the same thing, right? I have something targeting my dev environment, my QA, and my prod that I've identified. And uh, what I also like to use is and use a lot of variables in this case. So what I have is in my variable section, I've already gone ahead and defined the uh, solution that I want to give or get. And you can create multiple of these variables. And remember, this is just one simple task that I'm showing. You can actually have multiple different agent jobs piped together. So you want to, if you want to target multiple power platform solutions together in this context. Now, as you can see, uh, the way I can go ahead, and this is just an example of what's all there. But if I just type in power platform, if I can type, all right, you have all these different actions that are available to you. All right. So if you're using Power Pages, if you're using um, Power Automate flows and things like that, all these actions are available to you uh, to go ahead and incorporate into your pipeline as it is. And again, you'll always see the latest and greatest version from Marketplace showing up here. Okay. So even if you may have not installed the latest and greatest version, every time that we push changes into the Marketplace, you automatically get it. All right. And if you're in doubt what particular version or version you're running, there it is. That's available right there itself. <clears throat> All right. So here what I have is I have the installer. So, again, just like uh, any other CI CD tool, before I go ahead and instantiate my runner, I want to make sure all the appropriate tools are downloaded. So in this case, it actually does that. And then from there, it goes ahead and exports the artifact. In this case, I want to export the uh, solution zip file or the solution name Mixed Reality Workshop and generate this zip file. This is, even though it's a zip extension, don't use expand archive on PowerShell or you know extract our, uh, uh, capability because it's actually a fully uh, combined library. And the only reason why we use the zip extension primarily is because it's got the Power Platform application has a bunch of proprietary formats along with JSON, XML, and a whole bunch of other things together. So when we export that entity, it comes out as a zip file. Uh, but you can unzip it, but then dependencies get mangled up. So we actually have tools uh, that allow for you to do that easily, which is why we have this unpack action, right? When you use this particular unpack action, all the appropriate dependencies and the, uh, uh, let's just put it this way, it is less mangled uh, when, you, uh, when you unpack versus you unzipping something just using a, a tool like extract, uh, expand archive as the case may be. All right, so I've gone ahead, I'm gonna go unpack this and then I've got commit changes. So all this is doing is going ahead and committing everything into into my repository. Now I've already gone ahead and run this ran this before. So if I go into my repository right now, I see this particular uh, folder right there, and I can as I, as you can see, my Canvas app shows up here. All right, uh, all the different connectors. So remember the connector that I was connecting to the Smithsonian yep. backend, uh, Smithsonian uh, as such. All that is rendered here in JSON, including the icon 
uh, that I'm using inside Power Platform to represent that particular connection. And then all the different environment variables that I've defined are all captured here in this kind of format here. So again, as I mentioned, it's proprietary formats like the MS app file here, in addition to JSON and XML that constitute that, uh, that zip file uh, when we export that from Power Platform into a Git repository as such. Right, and we don't want to unpack that. So noted, that's a pro tip. Yeah, yeah. We we provide the tools to unpack it. It's just that when you branch off, it becomes a problem. Gotcha. gotcha. <laughs> All right. Anyway, so so in this case, let's say I'm, I'm going to go ahead and I've, I've gone ahead and run this particular pipeline here. So let me just go ahead and say, all right, I'm going to go deploy to QA. So here, I just deployed this very recently, and if I can go ahead and uh, look at the tasks. If you notice, there's some similar tasks that I've already got uh, that were part of it. So for example, uh, I checked out everything, installed that. Now this time around, I actually packed uh, the raw format and actually reconstituted that zip file altogether. Instead of just going ahead and using a standard zip file, I just constituted everything together. And before actually importing it into my QA, one of the things that I actually ended up doing was something called as uh, Power Platform Checker. This is a service that we provide. And it's actually uh, a service in the environment. So before actually going ahead and uh, importing, I have to go ahead and uh, use the Power Platform Checker. In this case, in order to use a checker, you have to still authenticate to the uh, to the checker as well before it actually can go ahead and, and validate your, your zip file constitution in this context, right? So in this case, it tells me everything seems to be working fine. It hits that particular endpoint there, and it tells me exactly the kind of bugs that might potentially harm. Uh, if it's critical, it will stop the pipeline right then and there itself, mm -hmm. all right? In this case, I've got a bunch of medium, 43 medium inconsistencies. You know what? That's fine. <laughs> not a deal breaker. We can still yeah, not a deal breaker. And we can exactly. click those thresholds, right? So critical and high will stop it. Medium, exactly. we can proceed and put them in the backlog. Exactly. Exactly. All right. So once that is done, it will then go ahead and, and import that directly into my, uh, into my uh, QA environment. And I'll tell you all these, by the way, one of the other things that we ended up doing, this was a, a, a big pet peeve for a lot of the Azure DevOps uh, community members who were using Power Platform was a lot of the calls initially to Power Platform were synchronous. Mm -hmm. We have changed them all to asynchronous. So now they're all using asynchronous imports uh, and that's all now baked in. So by default, when you're using the Azure DevOps task in Power Platform and you know running your CI/CD pipelines, they will default to asynchronous unless you specifically want them to be synchronous, okay? So pro tip again there for you folks that are using this. Uh, asynchronous is now by default. You don't have to actually switch it on uh, every single time. Cool. Well, it's great the community spoke out and you guys were able to adapt and make that happen for them. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, uh, I got to admit, the Azure DevOps community is pretty opinionated and I appreciate that. <laughs> it helps, helps us write better products. Exactly, exactly. So here, uh, from my QA environment, I can now go ahead and run my uh, deployment. So again, same, what I'm going to do here is, and the task that we currently have is, I'm going to export uh, from my QA environment, uh, but this time around, it's not, there's a there's a construct within Power Platform called manage. Um, the only different what what that means is when a solution is managed, it makes it immutable, which means it's no longer susceptible to change. When something is unmanaged, you can continue to keep changing and doing things of that nature as uh, to the app as the case may be. Um, so when you uh, when you're in dev when you're in dev environments, you always keep your solutions as unmanaged. Now, if you do deploy managed uh, solutions in your dev environment, they're usually because you have a dependency with the third, like a third party DLL or something of that sort, or someone else in your org has gone ahead and built this capability and you've now taken a dependency on it, okay? So those kind of things, again, when you define your environment, make sure the right set of dependencies have been deployed. You can even automate uh, dependency deployments as well. So those are just some of the things that you can go ahead and do, all right? So in this case, again, uh, this time around, I'm exporting, all right? Now, this is, if you see these purple text, this is not usual. This is because I actually said enable system diagnostic. So if you want to get a more detailed view of what's actually going on, this is actually with uh, Power Platform with debugging enabled, all right? So if you want to kind of look at exactly what's going on here, that's what this purple text is. If you uh, uh, switch the uh, de uh, debugging semaphore to zero, you won't see a lot of those debugging tasks as such. This is usually helpful when you're running CI CD pipelines and you want to figure out if, if your pipeline breaks and you can't seem to figure out head or tail of why it's breaking, this particular functionality within Azure DevOps really, really helps. Awesome, yeah, because troubleshooting pipelines can be a pain. <laughs> exactly, <laughs> all right. So here in this case, I've gone ahead and done the export. Uh, 
I go ahead and again, just like uh, in, in in some of the prior cases, you know, just like any other CI/CD pipeline, I want to make sure I check, run some tests, and make sure everything's working fine before I actually import it into my uh, you know prod environment, so to speak. So in this case, I'm again running a check. Uh, again, you're going ahead, and this time around, you're doing a check against the prod uh, environment instance checker. Good thing is, if you notice, just like the way it was in my um, in my QA environment, nothing has changed, which means everything's working as the way it is. And again, this is not a deal breaker. And then I go ahead and import that directly into my target environment. In this case, how do I know that I'm, I'm putting into my target environment? This is the URL, all right? So now using that service connection that I had, that service connection is using, that, uh, using the appropriate set of service principle and then importing this particular zip file into my prod environment in that context. Cool. And you have that output as well to see where it's going to, to vet that as well. Before. Exactly, yeah. exactly. All right. So that was that's just some kind of things that you can go do. And again, uh, you know, one of the great things about this is that, you know, within Azure DevOps, if you are YAML savvy, you can use the YAML editor to go ahead and create these workflows. Or, you know, if you're if you're not so YAML savvy like myself, you can go ahead and uh, use the tasks that are already there and drag and drop and, uh, and put them in place. And you'll still be able to get this full turnkey pipeline all set up in, in a matter of in a matter of minutes. Awesome. And I love the fact that you've properly segmented your environment. So you segmented them in the Power Platform, you segmented them in Azure DevOps and kept all the variables related to that environment together, which is great best practice. So we have like for like environments, we know exactly what's happening through each of the deployments, and we've actually kept everything separate. So it lowers our impact if and when something happens. Exactly. I, I, I you know, like I said, I was, I was a, a former DevOps engineer myself, so I have the scars to prove it. <laughs> So you, don't need more scars. Hard. <laughs> you don't need more scars. Kartik, awesome. That is so cool. I love being able to see how we can deploy that with Azure DevOps. Um, for everyone watching, we'll put all the links for all of Kartik's demos for you to see and to replicate. Mm -hmm. um, you can also pull out the YAML file if you go into the marketplace, fill in all the details, it will spit out the YAML. So uh, you have both options available to you. Everyone loves a picture, though, when they're creating pipelines. Everyone yeah. loves a picture. Yeah, I know. So Kartik. <laughs> Thank you so much for showing us how to deploy Power Platform with Azure DevOps. April, thank you. Thank you for having me, folks. <laughs> thank you all, and see you all next time on the DevOps Lab.